everyone, it's Dominique, and in this video, I'm just going to show you how to use your Tim Holtz Distress Ink. So, you've probably seen them before at your local craft store. They come in a black box, these ink pads, and they also have um, little bottles that are refill uh, refills. So, you can refill your ink pad, or you can watercolor paint, because these are water-based inks. And they come in 36 different colors, probably more in the future, but who knows. And um, you can also find this little, it looks like a stamp, but what it really is, is a piece of Velcro glued onto a um, block of wood with a wooden handle. And with it comes some felt, pieces of felt that stick right onto the Velcro. And this is your blending tool. So you can blend a wide variety of colors. Some of the most popular ones being sold right now are Vintage Photo and Broken China. Surprisingly, brown and blue. They're brown and blue tinted. Um, they go really well together in terms of blending. And the other one I have is Shabby Shutter, which is a green shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink the edges of this piece of paper that's going to go on the front of a card for a friend. So because these ink pads are stackable, you may want to label what the color is on the side with a label maker. So I'm going to go with the Broken China. And it doesn't matter if <coughs> you stack your inks, uh, ink pad up or side on its side, but don't stack them facing down words, um, because if you do, you may lose quite a bit of ink as it will seep to the top, and that just wouldn't be good. It would be a waste of ink, and these are affordable, but still you don't want to waste your craft products if you don't have to. So open up your ink. Take your applicator and press on your ink pad a few times. You can always take your ink pad and blot the paper if you want. Now, before you put your um, applicator onto the paper, don't put it on completely vertically, like such, because you'll get a nice big block square image of ink, and it just doesn't look nice. So what you want to do is go on an angle, and then work your way forward. So I'm just going to move the camera a bit closer. So I'm just starting off on an angle, going lightly. And because it's water-based, it will take a little while to dry. So that's a prime time to really blend or add another color. So as you can see here, it's kind of looking blocky. So what I'm going to do is just add a little more and just really watch how I angle my applicator and my paper. So just bear with me for a moment here while I put that. And the paper I'm using, um, it's just a light pink patterned paper. That I got from a crafting magazine a while ago that I just finally found. I dug it out and decided I would go to town with using them since I have them. So always start with less. 
and then build up. Or else you're going to have something like this, where you have very dark patches that are kind of clumped together, and then lighter patches. So now what I'll do is I'll keep blending it in, and then I'll add a second color. And to add a second color, you can just reuse the same felt, or I flipped it around. Or you can use a new piece of felt. And they sell them um, with the blending applicator, and as well separately, or you can just buy felt, thin felt, and hook it on with the Velcro that's already on the bottom of your applicator. Now there's more to distress inks than just pushing it around and blending it with a wooden block. So as I discover different things to do with distress inks, I'll be more than happy to make some more videos. Right now, <coughs> I'm trying to darken the corners so it looks as if this was intentional <laughs> and lighten the sides, but without overdoing it. And what I may do in the end is trim the corners or use some those fancier scissors that have different edges to them, like the Fiskars Kid Scissors or Kid Zors. So here's what I have so far. It's a bit darker in the corners, lighter on the sides, which is what I'm aiming for. And now I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to just flip over my felt reapply it. I'm going to go with the shabby shutters. Now it's not going to look like there's a lot of ink um, on your felt pad and I think it's just because it's felt so it's absorbing a lot of it. <coughs> So just try a little bit at a time, and then go from there. And this combination looks really great. I apologize, you probably can't see the difference on the camera, or on the video, because of the lighting and because they're so close together. But right now, Distress Inks are one of my favorite products. I'm really enjoying them. And what I'll do is I'll post a photo of this finished card on my blog for everybody to see. You can find the blog link at the bottom. I'll post it for everybody there. Okay, so maybe you can see a difference, maybe not, but there's a bit of green. So that's one way to use your Tim Holtz Distress Inks. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.